Are your AI generated images almost perfect, but missing that finishing touch? Do you want to refine and polish your AI image to bring out its true potential? In this video, I'm going to show you my process of editing an AI image in Photoshop. Join me today as I take the AI created artwork and add some flair to it to make it uniquely mine. Maybe enough to satisfy the US Copyright Office that it's a unique work? Maybe not, but I'm definitely going to stamp my personal touch on the image. Whether you're a Photoshop pro or a curious beginner, this tutorial will have something for everyone. Let's think of the image the AI image generator gives you as a rough draft. We're going to go from this image to this one. I have no idea if the Copyright Office would think that I did enough work to change this image. The US Copyright Office recently announced that AI generated art needs a personal touch to be copyrightable. But how much change is enough? That's really the question. It's clear that prompting is not enough. It's not clear how much change has to happen before the work is considered an original work. But it is clear that we're going to have to get creative. The image we're starting with was a complete accident. It's one of those accidents that you sometimes get in mid-journey when you use the dash dash no parameter. So the prompt is definitely not representative of the result. But I love the image and the texture and the dark tone is just my cup of tea. I'm going to use Photoshop to edit the image. It's what I'm most familiar with, but there are a lot of other image editing programs out there, many of them free. First, I'm going to zoom in and look closely at the details. I like the overall image, but the AI can throw up some artifacts. I'm looking at the details, anything that needs to be fixed or that draws the eye. The first thing I notice is the edges. A lot of the AI images just aren't sharp enough. So I'm gonna start by sharpening the image. Sharpening brings out the edges and just makes the whole image cleaner. There are many good sharpening tools out there. I like the Smart Sharpen tool in Photoshop. Make a duplicate layer and open the Smart Sharpen filter. I also like Topaz Sharpen, but on my old Mac, it runs a bit slowly. There's no formula for sharpening. Move the sliders and see what it does to your image. But remember, a little goes a long way. It's really easy to over sharpen. Before I jump in and start being really creative, I'm gonna clean up some of the details. I'll remove any imperfections and AI artifacts. I do this on a new layer and zoom in really tight for a close look. I'm using the spot removal tool and sometimes the clone tool. For bigger areas, I use Photoshop's content aware fill tool. I'm looking for anything that might catch my eye. I make my brush just a little larger than what I'm removing and take pixels from an area nearby. I'm using hotkey brackets to change the size of the brush. I'm pretty detailed at this stage, so it takes me quite a bit of time, but it's worth doing this now. The first big thing I want to change is the eye. I want her to be looking at something. I'm going to take an eye from another image and move it into place. I'll select the eye and copy it onto a new layer. Then I'll move the eye into place and use the Transform Warp tool to fit it in and clean up the edges. When compositing, try to match details like shading. I did little things like lighten the whites of the eyes and add a catch light. I also use blend modes a lot. I actually made two different eyes. If I turn on and off the layers, it makes the eyes look like they're shifting a little or even winking. I like this little winking trick and hide this as a little Easter egg in some of my videos. All I'm doing is turning on and off layers in Photoshop as I record my screen. For videos, I usually make a GIF between layers, one with the eye open and the other closed. If you wonder why I didn't change the color of the eye, it's because I'm going to shade the entire image. I think a gradient will work really well. I start by playing with the default Photoshop gradients. I can always make one if one of these doesn't work. Then I change the blending mode and opacity. I'm going to up the contrast by dodging and burning a little. Dodging is lightning, burning is darkening. I do this all the time in my photos. I generally take my cues from the image, lightening the light bits, bringing them out, and darkening the dark parts. Set up a new layer on overlay with 50% gray. I have an action set up for making this layer. Then I use the white and black brush at around 10% opacity to build up my shadings and highlights. This stage is really important. This is where you decide which elements need to stand out and be brighter and which elements to de-emphasize by making them darker. 
This stage takes some time and I'm continually clicking on and off the layer to see if I like the results and what more needs to be done. I'm doing a bit more to clean up. There are a couple of butterflies that merge with the face that I don't like very much. Watch closely for mergers where elements overlap or if elements get cut off by the edge of the frame. I'm back on the cleanup layer because that's what it's for. If I think I'll change my mind, I'll make a new layer. I'm lassoing the butterflies and using Photoshop's Content Aware Fill tool. It's a simple job, so I don't need to go into the Content Aware Fill workspace. You can also add elements. I'm going to add a few more butterflies by simply using the Stamp tool on a new layer. Just make sure your eye doesn't pick up on the repetition. If the butterflies are too close and too similar, I'll copy the butterfly and warp and rotate it to try to make it a little bit different. Now let's add a little color to her lips. I add a new layer and choose a color. Don't worry if it's too strong right now, I'm gonna fix that later. Paint the lips and then use the blend mode to blend it into the image and use the opacity slider to adjust the strength. Let's do a bit more with the colors. I'm going to bring out the butterfly on her face. I'm gonna make it more of the cyan color. I roughly cut it out and put it on a new layer. Then I use the color tool to adjust the colors. I can then use a layer mask to fine tune the edges. I started with a square image, but I don't have to stay that way. I have a couple of tricks to extend the canvas. First, I'm gonna give you a command option. Command, Option, or Alt, Shift, E, is a handy key combination in Photoshop. It combines all the below layers and gives me a clean layer to work on. If the border lets me, I can stretch the contents in the edge of the frame using the Transform tool. Then I let the Content Aware Fill tool do its job. It's not perfect and I'll have quite a bit of cleanup work to do before I'm happy with the edges. I adjust the frame so that one of the key points of the frame sits over the eye. And finally, I like to add a patterned overlay to my images. It gives my images some depth and visual interest. Here are two of the layers I'm going to add. You can use any images you want or textures. Lay the image over your frame, then adjust the blend mode and opacity. Add a mask and remove it from where you don't want it to be for instance, over her face. And here's the final product, before and after. Use your AI images as a starting point for your own personal artwork. So grab your digital paintbrush and let's unleash the full potential of AI art together. Let us know how you personalize your AI images in the comments below. If this video was helpful, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. This is Jen in Making the Photo. Let's make something amazing together. Bye.